Here we go live. Good morning, Revolution. And welcome to Good Morning Revolution to all of our friends on Facebook and YouTube. And if you see us on Instagram and Twitter, that's okay too, Rosanna. And uh, good morning. Anita, how are you? Good morning, Revolution. Good morning, good morning. Good morning Revolution. Did the weather warm up in LA yet? Rosanna, you were cold last time I talked to you. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit. My shower was a little cold. Okay. We're, we're at 45 up, up. degrees here, which is Ooh, not that is cold. I'm in, in LA. California. I'm... Yeah. Anita? It's in the way, 70s uh... here in Florida, so oh. I can't complain. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You're in Florida. I was going to say, how's the weather in Ohio? But you're, uh, you're it, It's miserable in Ohio. So. <laughs> you know what they call people like you? They call you snowbirds. That's right. People who go down south for the winter. And, and, uh, and then they come back in March or April and uh, when the, to the east and the Midwest when the weather is warm. I'm stuck in New York, uh, but I'm okay. I'm happy <laughs> and, and let's get to it. We're going to have a discussion. First of all, I want to invite everybody who's watching this show to join the Communist Party. End of the year, make a decision. You go to cpusa.org uh, backslash join, backslash. That's all you got to do. And then click on the button, sign up. We want you. We have recruited 1,700 members since August, Rosanna. That's right. 17 since the 15th of August, or 20th, or something like that, you know? If you, you really guys wanted got a lot to of do something. Huh? If you ever want to, you know, be part of the change you want to see, join the party. Mm -hmm. Join the party. You know, you got this concept, Rosanna, that we're a serious party. <laughs> I love that concept. We're not out here playing, you know? Nope. We've been here for, what, 103 years? Mm -hmm. And we're, oh, and we're going strong. Um, so go, go Anita, cpusa.org backslash join backslash sign them up you got a lot of new right. members in ohio we have, have a lot of new, a lot of new members in ohio and i've i've uh, talked to a lot of them on the phone or um you know by text and email um and people are saying that they are joining the party because it's a serious party that we have a we have a long history and we have a structure and we have activities going on all the time in ohio so um, we're getting, we have a lot of excitement here in Ohio, you know, going forward. Uh, maybe, maybe new clubs emerging where there's little collectives, especially in rural areas. We're, we're really hoping to, to develop that. So we've got some great new members and I'm really excited for the future. Well, I hope you build a club in Youngstown, my hometown, which is mm -hmm. kind of becoming a that. rural area, Rosanna. You can see mm -hmm. turkey and deer. And oh, raccoons, wow. lots of going up and down the streets, you know. Mm. And uh, so people growing corn in the summertime, roosters, oh. chickens, you know, the whole nine, mm. the whole nine. You got chicken coop in the backyard of my dad's old house mm -hmm. and uh, that kind of thing. Anyway, so, uh, and then donate. We got a fund drive going on. We're trying to raise $35,000. I think we got 34 now. So help us uh, get over the top. Maybe we can get to 50,000. And um, you can go to cpusa.org uh, backslash donate backslash. You know, we accept $100,000 contributions, 50,000, uh, 1,000, anything you want to give, $5, we're ready to uh, receive it. Anita. Democracy. Did you watch the Biden Democracy Summit? I, I, I watched some of it, Joe, not the whole thing. Um, I, there were some interesting uh, little videos from, from each of the participants, um, some in their own language uh, that, that haven't been translated yet. But there's some interesting coverage of it. It, um, it, was, it was evidently something that Biden actually had promised quite uh, during his uh, campaign. Um, but then it, it, it became a little ridiculous after the January 6th insurrection. 
And there was a lot of talk about the who was on the invitation list for this summit. Um, and it, it excluded um, some, ironically excluded Honduras, which had just had a very successful election with a more peaceful transition of power than we had in the United States that uh, this past year. So, um, so it's, uh, it, it, was, it was flawed from the beginning. They invited Taiwan, uh, not, uh, not China and, and Russia, of course. So it was a, it was a very skewed um, uh, conference. Um, I don't think anything will come of it, but, um, but it was a chance for, um, uh, one of the people I watched was Andrew Holness, who I don't love, Andrew Holness, who's the prime minister of Jamaica, but he did, um, express some really nice sentiments about democracy being more than just the me mechanics of an election, but also including really engaging with the will of the people. And I don't think we're seeing that in our daily lives. In Ohio, we don't see the will of the people expressed in, for instance, redistricting. We keep having these citizens initiatives to reform redistricting. And uh, the government, the state government of Ohio just keeps turning its back on people's will going ahead and doing whatever keeps them in power. So it's a chance to at least talk about what is democracy and, and let's try not to get it confused with capitalism, which I think uh, is Biden's intent here. I think you're right about that. Now, I did not watch the summit, Rosanna. I don't know about you, but I did not. I was too busy working on the Jarvis Tanner birthday celebration. So I didn't get a chance, but I did read about it a little bit uh, afterwards. And I wonder, I was thinking, as I was reading about it, I was wondering what do these people who convene and think the greatest threat to democracy is? Some of them will say Putin, Rosanna, and some of them will say Xi Jinping. But I don't think it's an individual, you know? And um, I would challenge that idea, you know? So I was wondering if, if you and uh, Anita have any thoughts about what the greatest threat to democracy in the world is. You well, know, and capitalism. you can't say Donald Trump either. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's capitalism. I don't think it's an individual. I agree with you. Mm. I don't think it's an individual. I think it's the, you know, the issues, capitalism itself is, you know, they're, they're, they're running scared in some, in some ways. And so this idea, these, this ideological battle that, that is being waged is deep. This whole uh, democracy summit is, it, it's, it's an attempt to do that. It's an attempt to confuse it. And as Anita said, you know, to, to not blame capitalism, but to, to blame other things that have nothing to do with it. It's capitalism, but it's a way to divert the, you know, who the real culprit is. The United States is an imperial power that's, that has intervened in democracy all over the world. And so, yeah, it's capitalism. And I think it's important not for, for us not to focus on individuals because we lose sight of, of the whole issue. Good point, Anita. And we have a concept that, that, that embraces uh, the difference between what we call democracy in the capitalist world and, and real democratic uh, participation by people. And that's the concept of bourgeois democracy, which is just uh, the, the mechanics of democratic forms in, uh, in, in uh, dem uh, capitalist countries um, that give people the illusion that they have some kind of um, uh, power over their government when really they're just being asked to go through the motions of, uh, of elections every four years. And then the politicians seem to do what they want or what, they're, what their donors want them to do. So you're, you agree with uh, Rosanna that it, capitalism is a threat, but is that the only threat, Anita? Uh, <laughs> Well, I think there are there are uh, right wing and, and misinformation ideas out there in the in the in the atmosphere. There's misinformation about about elections and um, and there's other kinds of um, conspiracy theories out there that really do um, that may pose a threat to uh, democracy. I think 
the whole persistence of um, of the big lie uh, from last uh, election, uh, the last presidential election, the continuation of that that big lie uh, and its reiteration. I see it all around me um, in this setting down here. So um, I think those kind of things still are a threat to democracy as well. What about COVID? Is, is that a threat to democracy, global pandemics? Or the uh, environmental uh, crisis? All those tornadoes. At 200 miles of tornado last week. Oh my, you know, I always, what if I'm driving Rosanna down the road? <laughs> mm -hmm. I wonder about that, you know, you yeah. know, and, and there's a tornado coming. What do you do? I go in the opposite direction. I'm, <laughs> I'm turning my car around quick, fast, and in a hurry. And I'm going the opposite. I might even go across the cornfield <laughs> to get away well, I'm from, from California, and you know, I'm from California, and all I, all I know what to do is if there's an earthquake, a tornado, or a hurricane, I, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's, it's, it's another it's a another issue. Devastation that happened there just but but Joe, Fear. I don't think, huh? I don't think it's a threat to democracy. I think um I think those those kind of events uh show the importance of um of I think people if people's will was really um listened to, I think we would have solutions to um, towards uh, ending global warming and the climate crisis. Um, I think people really want those, um, those, those measures to be taken. Um, that they're not being taken is, is a, an erosion of democracy. Well, yeah, exactly. And, and that's the point, you know, you see, if People don't get, see, the, the right wing is arguing that mandates restrict your freedom. I want to do my thing. I ain't wearing, I ain't getting no mandate. I ain't wearing no seatbelt. I'm not going to wear a helmet. I'm not going to get a shot. Uh, and, and therefore, they are increasing the uh, rate and transmission of these uh, viruses, which is, which then raises the, the, the threat to the public health requiring even more stringent control and you get into this never ending cycle. So that's a threat, it seems to me. And the same thing is true with regard to the environment. You know, if you don't control the environment now, regulate business, regulate them sons of I don't even want to say it, you know, uh, sons of guns, right? Because if you don't do it, they're going to destroy the planet, you know? So those things are, are, are threats to uh, democracy as well. It, it seems to me, I may be wrong, um, all born out of capitalism, those kind of here, right? You know, ignorance and... Um, Poverty is a threat to democracy. You know, one of the problems in, in with this pandemic, people ask, I was asking, why is it coming out of Southern Africa? Why? Because of poverty. Because of people, you have uh, very high rates of HIV AIDS and malaria and other diseases. Therefore, the general health of the population is lower than in other countries, leaving the people more susceptible to ever increasing mutations of the virus. That's but why you know, it's happening. They, they also say that um, uh, South Africa has a really good, even better than the United States at, at monitoring the genome of the, of the virus. And they recognize the variant but the variant might not have even started in South Africa. It may have started in Europe and gotten to South Africa. So, I mean, I think South African scientists have to be credited for, you know, being honest about what they found and alerting the world to it. And instead of getting congratulated, they were punished with um, travel restrictions, unfortunately. I want to return to this concept of what does democracy mean? You know, uh, you say the, the will of the people and how do you express that will? 
you know? When I was in college, I read a philosopher from France, Rosanna. His name was Jean-Jacques Rousseau. And he said that the general will of the people had to be expressed. That was the most important thing. And he said, well, maybe people said, well, how do you do it? And he said, well, to get everybody to go outside of their window and stand on their roof and wave their hands. <laughs> but how do you express the general will of, of the people uh, today? You know, that's a big question. Um, uh, well, I mean, you know, they, they do that in, in Cuba. Cuba, when they rewrote uh, their constitution or they updated it, not really rewrote it, they updated their constitution. It started, you know, I, I think some maybe a year before where their local communities uh, began to meet uh, in, in what would be like clubs or cells, uh, just in your community to discuss some of the issues. And from there, uh, they came to conclusions and resolutions, which they, they, they then sent it to the next level body and they were discussed there as well. And, and then it was sent up all the way to the time of the election, uh, uh, you know, to addition, uh, to put the, uh, to add whatever or update whatever needed to be done in, in the constitution. And that's how they arrived at a constitution that was not contested. It was because, you know, everybody had a, uh, had a, a say so. Same in, in Venezuela, they did the same thing with Hugo Chavez, they had these communities where they discussed it and they, you know, they came up with, with their constitution and their laws. And so that, that, uh, that's how you do it. Even, even some uh, countries that are just left leaning like um, Uruguay in the early part of this century, uh, they had um, huge conferences. I think that kind of democracy is, is messy and takes a long time. And um, and involves a, has to involve a lot of people. But in Uruguay, they would have these gigantic conferences where all of the stakeholders in a particular issue were uh, invited, and they would hammer out policies in that forum that really challenged uh, neoliberal policies um, that had been implemented in the previous Uruguayan administration. So I think it's messy. It takes a long time. It's um, but I think that's the way you have to do it, the way Cuba did it and the way other countries have tried to do it. What about the Soviet Union? Was it democratic, Anita? <laughs> I, well, I, 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 I'm not an expert on the Soviet Union, uh, Joe, um, I'm, unlike many, many of our comrades. Um, so I, I, I think it, it, want, it, it, it had a democratic heart to it. It meant for the Soviets, the, the workers, uh, to really um, be in control of their society. In that regard, yes. You know, I wonder if can a one party state be truly democratic in today's world, like in the United States? Do we want a one party state in this country? Anybody? I don't think Cuba, Cuba doesn't have a one party state. I don't think China has a one party state. It's it may maybe uh, uh, different different degrees of, of power and different kinds of parties, but I think uh, getting us together and um, and working out policies that really reflect people's needs and and wants is um, something that transcends party boundaries. Gus Hall used to say, Rosanna, that the one party state was created in Russia and the other republics of the Soviet because they needed to industrialize rapidly. They had to go on what he said was a forced march. And he said that worked for a while, but then it kind of turned into something else. And that the people, and you know, the flow of, he, he said one of the things that you need to do in order to have a forced march is control the flow of information. And that was one of the key. But in today's world with the internet, social media, you know, um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, uh, you know, tweet, Twitter. It's impossible to control all of that. What do you think? 
Well, I think um, people's thinking has to be at a level where we're thinking about each other, what's, what's best for the whole, as opposed to what's best for me. And this way uh, we can come around to conclusions and to decisions. As long as it's all people centered, uh, I'll, I'll, there, there may be at some road down, you know, decades from now or centuries from now where people are not as opposing to, to things. And, and that's because they've learned to, and they understand the importance of thinking about the whole as opposed to the individual and understanding their contribution and their sense of belonging to a community, to a, to a society that looks out for everyone. And so I think moving in that direction uh, will eliminate you know, a lot of these issues and problems. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, we, we, we've got to work towards changing our mindset and, and being more, you know, inclusive as opposed to, uh, you know, what's in it for me sort of, sort of uh, thinking. I don't All know right, if that well, answered I, your question. <laughs> no, I think, I, I, I think, it, you know, uh, we have, we, we, we have to consider those kinds of issues, which Brings me to one of the questions we got this week. I just want to read it. Y'all take a shot. <laughs> this person writes, I was wondering about writing a book on the laws of the Communist Party. Um, and he said, or she said, or they said, the laws would have to detail the new order. But I don't know what they are. I don't have any sources. She said, what laws? Uh, what shall be the laws of the Communist Party in the new Socialist Republic? Um, anybody have an idea? What kind of laws would, would the Communist Party impose, Anita? Well, I don't think they're the laws of the Communist Party. They would be the laws of our society that, uh, that um, a socialist society was established. I think maybe one place to start, what is that Cuban constitution that, that Rosanna referred to that was just a, a, um, voted on a, it within the last couple of years anyway. Um, but I think we have to, we would have, we would um, imagine laws that prohibited exploitation of workers and stealing uh, workers um, labor uh, in the interests of, of private profit. profit. So I think it would probably start there with um, economic regulation, regulation of economic life. Um, so such that working people uh, benefit and, from their own labor and production and um, get the things that they need, the healthcare and education and um, freedom from want uh, that, that we certainly could afford in this country for everybody. Rosanna, I used the word before profits. I was, huh? I said, put people before profits. But that should be the foundation of the law. But I used the word imposed because I was trying to provoke y'all. <laughs> 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 the Communist Party will not impose any law. That's right. The law of the people, of the working class, and it's going to have to be a coalition a pro-working class and people forces that elect a socialist government and, and uh, through the, an expression of the popular will. And it's gonna take more than elections too. It's gonna take strikes and demonstrations and sit-ins and occupations and a mass movement that's gonna have to generate and regenerate itself over and over, you know, because the socialist revolution is not just one act. It's a series of acts over an entire historical period. So we're, we're in for the long haul. But we're not about imposing, you know, laws. We're about enacting them. <laughs> you know, laws have to be enacted, you know, through, through. And I imagine that the forms that that's going to take are going to be really interesting and beautiful. Because revolution, I'm kind of getting into phrase, Margaret, now. <laughs> is a festival of the people. And there'll be so many different creative ways that people will express the popular will, I think, you know? And of course the internet and 
and uh, the various forms of, of uh, social media will give us a new opportunity to do that. Meanwhile, we're struggling in bourgeois democracy. By the way, I read somewhere somebody said we should get rid of the term bourgeois democracy. Do you agree with that, Anita Rosana? Absolutely not. I think it does describe the combination of capitalism and uh, and the trappings of democracy that that fool people into thinking that they have a real voice in their government. How well, else would we, how else would we describe? How else would we, would we describe that? It's ideological disarmament. Yeah, that's what that is. <laughs> People should know better. It's ideological disarmament. We live in that's a capital. A that's why we got Trump in them. Yeah. Controlling. That's why they passed that law. What was that law that the Supreme Court where money is no object to election? Citizens. Uh, Citizens United. 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 Yeah. Bourgeoisie United using billions of dollars to control the election. How can you not talk about that? It's unimaginable to me. All right, I'm gonna stop yelling. Uh, <laughs> top three events of the year before we end. Anybody? Uh, my grandchild was born on hey, the inauguration <laughs> of the new president. Okay. Uh, I think the you know the devastation and the hurricanes was another. You know, as recent, it does just the to flatten the whole town is just. I mean, if people were denying climate change, I hope that this will help them to really see it for what it is. And then I think, um, you know, the attempt of the takeover of the Capitol was the beginning of this year. <laughs> I right. think that's another, you know, interesting thing. You got a good list there going on. <laughs> Anita? Yeah, I, well, I have to agree with Rosanna on those the points that she made. I think that January sixth event was a real, uh, really shocked everyone, and will be, you know, the probably the number one event in our in in the history books. But also, there was a lot of persistence of things in this year. It wasn't a big one event thing like January sixth was, but the January 6th um, commission looking into that, uh, the ongoing inquiries into it, um, the persistence, as I said earlier, of the big lie that the, the um, election had been stolen. So I think all the persistence of misinformation about COVID, um, I think all of these things are, are not one event, but they do have shaped the, the way the year has turned out. What about all you, right. Joe? Here's mine, I'm gonna give you, Two and a half or three. Number okay. one, are you ready? January 6th, but not the, what happened in DC, but what happened in the state of Georgia mm -hmm. when the Republican senators were defeated. And what are those guys' names? Oskoff and Ossoff. Reverend Ooh. Warnock. Warnock and Ossoff. What did I say, Oskoff? Uh, sorry, sorry, <laughs> Senator. You know, I, I missed the case him, I'm sure. the continent. That was really important. In Georgia, shook the bourgeoisie's world. I mean, it, 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 at least the right wing section of it. I didn't think it was going to happen, but it did. So, number one, January 6th, the state of Georgia, it showed a new model a political a action. Well, actually it wasn't all that new. Harold Washington and them did it in Chicago <laughs> back in the day. All right, so that's number one. Number two, strike Tober. Workers mm -hmm. rising up, going on strike, y'all. I mean, you know, the biggest strike wave since 2018. And that's really important. Um, Number three, damn near 2,000 people joined the Communist Party. God damn it, that's a hell of a thing. That's the fastest growth that we've had in decades, Rosanna, Anita. And uh, 
you know, the biggest thing that we need in this country is a bigger, stronger communist party. That's right. And it's going to change the whole trajectory. And we put working class revolutionary politics into the mix, the politics of unity and the fight, you know, that combat, I'm telling you, it's going to be something, y'all. Watch out. This party's under new leadership, a new administration, and we're moving forward. All right. Stay strong. Stay safe. Stay in the fight. Any, this is our last good morning revolution for the year. Any wishes you want to share with our audience? Happy 2022. Yep. Happy 2022. It's going, it's going to be a wonderful year. Rosanna? Yep. Have a peaceful 2022. One love. Peace out. See you next year, everybody. Get Bye -bye. your booster shot. Bye.